And this lesson we're looking specifically at transport in vascular plants. So we've covered off gas exchange, we're now looking at transportation. Right, so we know that autotrophs use light energy to make their own chemical energy uh, via photosynthesis, and this process is occurring in the leaves of the chlor uh, in the chloroplast. So in order for this process to happen in the leaves, all the necessary elements for the chemical reaction actually need to get there first. Okay, Transport systems in vascular plants involve specialised tissues, Right, we're specifically looking at the tissue level um, to get things where they need to be. We're talking water, we're talking sugars, um, and they actually might have to travel substantial distances. They might need to get um, you know, water all the way from the bottom of the roots, uh, in deep in the soil, all the way to the top of the plants where the actual leaves are. This could be a massive distance to travel. And the sugars that are created in the leaves then need to be delivered to every other cell in the organism in some kind of efficient manner. There are two main types of transportation systems we'll be discussing. We're going to be talking about xylem and phloem. Okay, xylem are in charge of water and inorganic organ transportation, while the phloem manage the dissolved sugars and other organic substances. These are continuous closed tubular pathways through the roots, the stems and the leaves, and it's essentially similar to the blood vessels in animals. Uh, the arrangement of the xylem and the phloem are really distinctive within the anatomy of the plant, and they huddle together in these things called vascular bundles. Right, We know that vascular tissue in animals is talking about the movement of blood. We're talking still about vascular tissues when we're talking about transportation of these other substances in plants. All right, we'll discuss the xylem first, and these are made of cells which form tubes to carry water and dissolve minerals from the roots to all parts of the plant. Now, interestingly, they only carry water in one direction, from the roots to the leaves, but it's their structure that makes them super unique. They are basically tubes made of dead cells end to end, um, and they also are surrounded by living cells to help protect them as well. When xylem die, the cell, the cell walls at the ends of the cells dissolve and they form these kind of sieve or straw-like tubes and they have really thick cell walls to make the xylem go super strong. Xylem have a secondary function of support um, and the walls of the xylem are lignified. They're strengthened with a substance called lignin and that's what's going to give plants say, a very woody and tough feel. And it allows the xylem to withstand a lot of pressure um, in changes as the water moves up and down. So when someone cuts open an old tree, you see kind of the old rings, and these rings are the old xylem one ring for each year that the tree was alive. Um, and this is what you'll see if you put celery in some coloured water and it draws it up and cut it open, and the vessels that are carrying the water will be stained and coloured. Now, so water is transported to all parts of the plant, and when it reaches the leaves, it's used for photosynthesis and then organic sugars are actually made. So these then need to be delivered to every single cell in the plant for energy. So now it's the phloem's time to shine. Now phloem cells are laid out end to end through the entire plant and kind of like the xylem cells, the phloem cells form these really big tubes. But these cells don't actually need to die to do their job. They aren't strengthened with lignin. I um, mean, interestingly, mature phloem cells don't really even have a nucleus. At the end of the phloem cells, there's all these little holes, okay, and they look like sieves, so cytoplasm actually can pass through them, connecting side-by-side -side cells. Now, the phloem tissue, um, you know, transports the dissolved organic substances to storage sites uh, where they're going to be needed for growth or metabolism or whatever. So some of these will be stored in things like flower nectar and fruits, uh, so they can attract animals and pollinators to spread their seeds as well. So let's look at the transport processes as a whole. Firstly, water and minerals have to actually enter the root cells. Um, and these cells are specifically structured to increase their surface area for absorption. So you might actually hear them called root hair cells because they have these large projections coming at the ends that look like hairs. Now there's also some extracellular absorption of water and minerals, meaning that instead of passing through the cell membranes of these cells in the roots, they actually just pass around the cells and instead of using these, you know, the various types of membrane transports that they need, they kind of bypass that. This is, however, intracellular movement, but the extracellular movement would be happening around the cell walls. So eventually the water and the minerals will have to end up in the same place, regardless of how they entered through the roots or across the membranes or extracellularly. Um, once inside, they make their way to the xylem and they are moved upwards right from the roots to the leaves in a process called transpiration. Now this is driven by heat energy, but it's also facilitated by the cohesive bonds 
right? Cohesive bonds that help water molecules kind of stick together. So they sort of drag themselves up, but it's only in a one way tube and it creates this differential pressure gradient. So they will only go in one way. Now about 99% of the water taken in from the plant is actually lost via transpiration. So the plant's environment is really influential on how fast this process actually occurs. So if there's you know, more stomata, um, if more stomata are open, it's going to allow for the plant to dry out quicker and move that water up the xylem faster. If there's an increase in temperature or wind, um, you know, more water vapor has moved away from the leaves and therefore it's going to increase that rate again. If the humidity is really low, however, um, it means that, again, the air outside is dry and that pressure gradient will increase. So if it's really high humidity, the concentration gradient will, will decrease and not drag as much water up the plant. When it's night and it's cool, uh, with an increase of humidity, plants draw less water and lose less water from the leaves. But if it's daytime, um, it's warm and it's dry, the transpiration rate will be super high. Okay, plants in the desert, they actually aim to lose a lot less water, obviously, um, you know, through transpiration, but this means they've got to make a lot of adaptations. They might have fewer stomata, they might only open them at night, they might have rolled leaves to protect the stomata from actually having things uh, evaporated out of them. They might have really large uh, volumes of water stored somewhere, um, you know, in a just in case kind of thing, and you know, hence why we get so many cacti, cacti and succulents in the desert. So once the water and the minerals have reached the leaves, the mesophyll uh, cells can undergo, uh, you know, can use them essentially as reactants in photosynthesis. Now that organic solutes are produced and these sugars are dissolved and transported around the plant through the phloem and they're generally known as sap at this point. And this process is called translocation. Now leaves are known as a source because that is the source of the sugars essentially. Um, and you know, plants also have sinks where they store these flowers uh, sorry, where they store these sugars like in flowers, in roots, in stems, and, and things like that. So about 90% of the sap is sucrose dissolved in water, and then transport through the phloem is an active process through the cytoplasm of the phloem cell tubes. So there's so many complex processes occurring in plants at any given time, and while they may not have entire organs dedicated to transport and gas exchange, their specialised tissues are still perfectly adapted to suit their function. Right? Covered off gas exchange. And this lesson was all about transport in complex plants.